because somebody. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's Leah Russ and Kira Farr, and we are here to do your weekly tarot check in and astrology check in. And as always, we are looking for what are predominant themes in the collective uh, and astrologically what's going on so that we can begin to prepare for um, what's coming and, and move through it with the greatest ease as possible. So take it away, Kira. Hello, everyone. We are back. Um, so today we decided that we would prepare the cards in advance and so I shuffled a couple of cards out of the deck for the collective. Uh, we decided to do this because we wanted to experiment with the energies that it was picking up on, what the tarot was diving into and all of that. So we'll see what we have to discuss today but I did, I will admit I did have a look at them beforehand just to get a general idea and tap into that energy in advance but I'll sh I'll start with the first card and I'll just explain what that is all about and we'll go from there so we have the eight of cups my lighting is quite terrible excuse that there we go that's beautiful I love these kitty cards did we get that last week yes yeah I'm using I thought same. I recognized it that's always interesting when we get the same card twice and it's the first card. Interesting. Yeah. So the Eight of Cups is about moving forward, moving on, following your sun, what brings you joy. Unfortunately, this card does come with a little bit of um, sadness as it is representative of leaving behind things that do not serve anymore for your highest and greatest good. So for the collective, this can apply to each individual differently, but I feel like there's a sense of just detaching from what doesn't um, what doesn't serve us anymore, what doesn't help us to progress. Sometimes there's a little element of grief in there because we will have attachments, we do have um, bonds with places, people, things. You know, we get attached to our jobs, we get attached to our homes, we get attached to the country we live in, people, even our favorite coffee shop we get attached to. So there is an element of grief with leaving things behind. But the Eight of Cups is one of my favorite cards because I'm someone who enjoys new beginnings and new starts, even with that pang of grief, you know, like I still enjoy the process that unfolds with moving on. So that's where we're starting. We then have the Three of Cups reversed, but I'll show you it upright just so you can get an image. Beautiful. These three cups playing yep. in this water. The Three of Cups is about social groups, friendships, community, uh, working with other people, um, not so much in a career sense, but in like a social fun recreational sense it typically represents good times um, parties friends gatherings social circles sisterhood and the three of cups in reverse is kind of like breeze a crowd gossip that type of thing it can represent that but with the eight of cups these two paired together indicates that there could be a major shift in the collective's social connections, social groups. There may be situations where it is time to let go of a childhood friend or a um, shift out of a group of people, moving away from a scene that doesn't gel with you anymore. Uh, for some of you, this could be leveling up and shifting away from a group of very gossipy people um, people that don't emotionally connect with you, that don't, there's not a equilibrium and mutual filling of each other's cups. There's like um, some social connections can be really draining and you're not getting any sort of reciprocity. So there's a necessary shift in relationships at this time. 
The Three of Cups doesn't correlate to romantic connections, um, but like I said, each individual person is different. So take this how it resonates, but there's definitely a strong emphasis on leaving behind a community of sorts and shifting out of the social society. This could even be moving out of your neighborhood or hometown. We then have three of pentacles reversed as well. Same deal, three cats. <laughs> and this is basically the work version of the three of cups. So this can talk about collaborations, um, projects with others, networking through, um, networking with people for the sake of a project or a career. This could be co-workers, um, anything to do with your social world in terms of making money, creative projects, hobbies, and of course, the Three of Cups, general friendship. So it just doubles down on the meaning that it is time for some necessary shifts with who you're spending time with, who you're socializing with, um, who you're collaborating with, where you're putting your money and time into, because it seems as if there's maybe a lack of balance in that area of life, a lack of reciprocity, a lack of mutual benefit, a lack of emotional fulfillment, maybe even stability. Also, Leah, if you have any thoughts that pop up, just feel free to put them in there. Well, I have to share with everybody. So the experiment we were running was to um, have her shuffle ahead of time to see if it made a difference in whether she was doing a reading, let's say partially for me, right? We wanted to just experiment with what it looked like. But it's so funny because the second card that you pulled is exactly what I went through today. And it's just like, hmm, this is interesting. So I would say you're spot on with stuff, seriously. Because we weren't yeah. even same room okay so it's like yeah this is even in the same country <laughs> yeah well you're able to read me and do readings for me even if, and other people even though they're not in the same country but you're like trying to tune in for them but when you read so spot on for the collective that's pretty amazing even if it takes a while to build up faith in it yeah, I, I continue to question it. And I'm always surprised when people are like, yeah, that's accurate. And I think it just comes down to that validation part, you know, that necessary reminder that, you know, what you're talking about, it makes sense, it's resonating. Well, and we're all struggling to free ourselves from the conditioning that we have undergone that caused us to ignore all these parts of ourselves that are so magically aware and so gifted and struggling back to give that validity for me. And I know for many others, it really is a process of revisiting it, then running away, then revisiting it, then getting pulled away, then revisiting it and getting knocked over, you know? And I mean, you just have to keep getting back and coming back to this makes sense, this resonates with me, this feels better than anything else does. And this is what we're doing this for, is to help people get back on track with what is important to them, what truly resonates. It's what, you know, it's what I'm doing. It just feels so good. Yeah, definitely. So we also have the King of Cups upright, which is a beautiful, powerful energy. Wow. Look at this little... <laughs> Regal kitty. Yeah. So the King of Cups is the quintessential father figure-like guidance. It's that strong, powerful, but deeply nurturing, wise energy. You know, it's the the King of Cups, I always like to imagine, and the, the imagery on the cards, if you 
seen different tarot decks that it's all different but generally the same kind of theme is there's this male figure or in this case cat standing or sitting in like a throne in amongst the chaos of the sea and the ocean represents symbolically emotion and feeling and the king of cups is capable of sitting with his feelings in amongst that in the most beautiful potent way and drawing the most wisdom from that um and connecting deeply to his intuition um so i think that with this situation there's an intuitive nudge within every individual and it's varying strengths depending on how connected you are to your individual individual intuition um but there's an intrinsic connection to intuition that that tugs at you when something feels wrong and also tugs at you when something feels right there's a difference uh and practicing tapping into your intuition and allowing yourself to not necessarily be dragged under by the tide but just to swim within it with control with curiosity with openness it's such a skill it takes a lot of work years worth of work and it's not always guaranteed to be a successful day of swimming through your emotions but this is what the king of cups is he's that wonderful wise old tree that you go to for guidance he's the wonderful spiritual guide that comes through your third eye to remind you it's okay for you to be young and emotional and he teaches you how to manage that so the archetype of king of cups is a really beautiful archetype and what i what i pull from this is that this situation that requires moving on from requires moving forward with a lot of grace with a lot of um internal fortitude with a lot of emotional maturity as well sometimes when we've been through a social situation that's very humbling very humiliating very painful in any context it can be really difficult for us to go with grace but i think the king of cups is is calling us to basically say hey it's time to go this isn't working leave with your emotions intact leave with your soul intact it's going to be okay and i think that's a really beautiful way to go to exit a group or a community you know for some people it could be leaving a church or leaving a religious community that they grew up in you know for some people it could be that group of women that they meet for coffee that they've been meeting with for 25 years for some people could be a marriage a partnership other people it could be a career that they've been involved in for 40 odd years you know it could be anything so the message with the king of cups is feel it all but feel it with grace self respect and honor for the emotions that you feel and the emotions that they feel and the experience that has unfolded because there's no better feeling than walking out of a situation knowing that you were as mature as you could be as responsible as you could be as kind and true as you could be and that doesn't mean they won't be hurt it just means that you did it the best that you could do it so i think that's a really lovely message that came absolutely through. is and you know it reminds me also of don miguel ruiz um of his four agreements and one of them is to be impeccable with your word and the gift to yourself when you're impeccable with your word is really immeasurable because you really begin to feel like a good person after a while and it's odd that we would be born or grow up feeling like we are not good people and somehow needing to struggle 
to a place where we can feel like we're right with the world. We don't know how. I think there's something wrong with cultures that don't innately teach their children how to grow into this. But what I found odd way around was that by focusing on being impeccable with my word, and it wasn't even that I changed so much, but that I became conscious of the fact that I was, and that made me feel trustworthy, and it made me feel like a good person. And so, you know, it's the same feeling of handling something to the highest of your ability. You know, yes, we can all use any excuse to dump our anger. Yeah. Anybody can do that. But can you be aware of your anger, acknowledge it for yourself, but still handle the situation in a way that leaves you feeling clean and strong and good about yourself. And that really, you know, again, if we are stepping into everything, using the barometer of feeling good about ourselves. And if it doesn't make you feel good about yourself, leave it. And if it makes you feel good about yourself, pursue it. I could think of no better advice. Yeah, exactly. Um, I always, I also have struggled and continue to struggle with thinking I'm a good person. But one thing that I don't know where I heard it from, but one thing that I always remind myself is that good people, um, sorry, bad people don't get torn up about the idea of being a bad person. Good people are the people who tear into themselves being like, oh my God, am I a good person? How do I make myself the best person? Those are the people who genuinely care as well as putting the actions behind those thoughts to actively step into a better version. Some people are so avoidant towards any form of change or self-improvement or growth. Those who aren't avoiding that, who are stepping into that, who are waking up each day thinking, how can I be better? Even if they don't succeed in that day, even if nothing changes or shifts, like for a little bit, if you're waking up every day with the intention, how do I be the best version of myself in any context, you are doing what you're supposed to be doing. And it, you're correct. Like people don't teach a lot of necessary things. We're so caught up in learning algebra and science and how to do all of our homework on time and work at a corporate nine to five that I didn't get taught how to regulate my emotions. I didn't get taught how to build a relationship with my anger. I didn't get taught how to be kind. You know, no, you're not taught how to communicate anger constructively. We're taught to communicate anger destructively and the loudest, messiest person wins the person that does the most damage that's like anger becomes warfare and that's yeah. not the point at all anger oh, my dogs are gonna howl oh, because the sign just cheater cheater come here come here let's see if i can nip that in the bud because that would have gone on for a long time yeah. <laughs> don't even think about it um anyway so yeah I kind of blew my train of thought. Why don't you continue with the thing? Oh, yeah. I'll just remind you what you were talking oh, about. Oh, okay. Just in case you want to continue that. Um, you were talking about how we're taught about how to, you know, use our anger destructively. And yes. Yeah. And so we are deprived of the beauty and the real gift of our anger is like a summer squall that clears the air and takes all the pollen and the pollutants out and you know yeah. just renews everything our anger is meant to move through things and if you can learn to express it in a constructive way where you are not where you own it you know when this happened 
I felt this way. And then hopefully you're around people that can hear that and be like, oh, I didn't know you felt like that. So, and they can help you explore it, you know, as opposed to if you say, when you did this, yada, 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 like you made me feel this way. That right there, you're just in a fight. There's no hope the other person could hear you. They have to be Hercules to hear you through that, you know, but if you can just say, you know, when this occurred, I really felt like, you know, so lost or rejected, you know, and hopefully the person can hear you, but they won't be able to hear you the other way. Yeah. It's definitely in the art form being emotionally in tune and connected and mature. So I've got one, two, three, four more cards, but it won't take too long to pour them out. So we have the tower reversed. That one's a bit hard to see, but there's a cat on a wrecking ball smashing through a window. <laughs> so typically what this card represents reversed is resistance to, sh to change, to shifts, and fear of things crumbling down, foundations crumbling down. But the tower enters our life. I call them tower moments. And don't get me wrong, they, they suck, to be real. You know, that's not fun. But a tower that is built on rotting foundation will not last. A tower that is built from rubble that hit or like built upon a mushy wasteland is not going to thrive. And you could consider yourself as an individual, as a tower, you cannot build yourself and thrive in the wrong environment. And the tower comes through like a wrecking ball and shatters the illusion of this perfect place that has been built. And so regarding our social connections and our workplace and our groups and organizations, we need to shatter the illusions we have in certain cases because a lot of the times we are shifting and ascending as a collective. And as Leah said when we before we were recording, not everyone's ascending at the same time. People aren't ascending together. That doesn't mean that we don't love them that we're leaving them behind or that they don't love us and that they're leaving us behind. Um, instead, it just means we're at different levels in life. We're at different places. And when we all go back to our original place, we will be there to support each other once again. And if we go into another life, likely it's with the same people and different roles because we're all here to help each other. We're just not all consciously aware of that. So sometimes these major wrecking balls that shatter the windows to this perfect little house that we've built metaphorically speaking um are just necessary chapters in our life but reversed it's a it's a resistance it's a natural resistance and fear to ending this situation this social standing this position whatever that may be for you as an individual. And there could be, with the King of Swords reversed, some kind of internal self-manipulation about the situation, clouded judgment, lack of clarity, twisting how you view things to benefit why or explain why it's still happening, why it's still in your life or you're still involved. This could manifest as over explaining to yourself, no, no, it's fine. You know, this is normal. This is supposed to happen. This is how this is supposed to be. Or this is, it could also be just an overall lack of clear, decisive thought surrounding this issue in this desperate attempt to kind of keep things the way that they are when the Eight of Cups is telling us things have to shift, things have to change. And the more 
big tower moments that you have in your life, the more you're going to get used to the shifts. I've only been alive for 22 years and the amount of tower moments that I've had, I've gotten to a point already where I'm like, let the ball smash the window, I'll clean up the glass, I'll pack my stuff, I'll find a new ground and I will build from there because I can't resist it, I can't fight it. If something exits my life, it is what it is. If something inside me is telling me I need to leave, then I will leave, provided, obviously, it is safe to do so. You know, let's all keep ourselves safe <laughs> before anything else. There are some situations where we do need to be cautious about where we're, where we're going and think about the next step, especially if it's leaving a family environment or a home. You know, there can be um, a new place of stability that we need to establish before we leave, right? So there could be some clouded judgment. We also have the Wheel of Fortune and the world reversed. So that's two major arcana, two major cards. It's hard to see. Yep. And then the world. Oh, kitties. They're very cute. And these cards um, both talk about cycles. The Wheel of Fortune is a sphere. The world is a sphere. It's all just circular motion, cycles. And the Wheel of Fortune reverse and the, the world, I'm just going to kind of mesh the meanings together, especially with the world. It's like the embodiment of renewal and completion, renewal and completion, cycles. And um, the world reverse is like there's a necessary need for closure and some sort of chapter to end. So perhaps the collective that we're tuning into right now is ready to embark on a very socially transformative journey closing a chapter and shifting out of something we have the last card which is the hierophant reversed which is typically the hierophant is traditions systems that are already in place following the rules structure it's very taurus like energy it's very grounded stable this is the foundation Taurus is fixed energy, it likes the stability. And so reversed, it's like breaking the mold. Reversed, it's almost Aquarius energy. It's, it's rebellion, it's change, it's cataclysmic movement outside of what we know. So there's definitely a necessary shift for the collective that I'm picking up on. And it could be very socially relevant to our groups, our organizations, our co-workers, our family, our friends, our social networks, etc. But yeah, I, I would suggest maybe journaling out or writing out how you feel about your current situation socially. And if that's gelling with you anymore, if that's resonating with any, you anymore. And if any of you are catching yourself, making excuses for people in your life who are continuously showing you that they're the wrong people for you, try with the King of Swords Reverse to kind of write that into this perspective of clarity, of logic, of reasoning, being able to expand your judgment in a broader sense of like, okay, you know, yeah, given this the benefit of the doubt multiple times where has it got so that's the overall tarot reading that i have for you guys i hope that that resonates um well i hope it resonates but i also hope that it 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 you know it's not as intense for you um 
but if it is an intense situation, it will pass. It's a tower moment, potentially for some of you. You will be fine. You will be okay. Step into that King of Cups energy and allow yourself to go with grace into the next chapter that unfolds. Yeah, great advice. And, you know, I feel, yeah, I resonated again completely with your reading just the way I did last week. So I hope that you guys can hold on to this. And again, remember that in everything, look for the resonance. Look for what feeds you and supports you and makes you feel good. Let that be your barometer. We have been allowing the outside world through our minds to control us for so long. And we think, you know, drudgery and we keep moving ourselves through that if we just endure this a little longer, if we just do that, then you know, these rewards are going to appear and they actually don't for most of us. And so when do we start allowing ourselves to feel good? And why don't we make our choices differently? You know, base your choice on as long as it's not harming anyone else. Base your choices on what feels good. What's in resonance. And stay tuned next week. And if you like, you know, pop up on Facebook and you can drop us a line about what's going on for you, if this resonated or not, or drop us a line in the email and reach out to us and let us know how you're doing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so Thanks. much. Bye.